Last week and a half, we've been trying to introduce you to all of the Democrats who hope to replace Andrew Cuomo as Attorney General, and there is a virtual army of them. We've already caught up with Manhattan Senator Eric Schneiderman, Westchester Assemblyman Richard Brodsky, and Attorney Sean Coffey, all of whom are actively running for the office. Nassau County DA Kathleen Rice is also openly running for AG, and Patterson's former public safety czar Denise O'Donnell, as well as former New York City Comptroller Liz Holtzman, are also both mulling a run. Our goal is to familiarize you with all of the Democrats who are looking to replace Andrew Cuomo in advance of this weekend's straw poll at the Democratic Rural Conference in Niagara Falls. The candidate who emerges as the favorite at the DRC generally gets something of a leg up heading into the state Democratic Convention where the party's nominee will be picked. Tonight we're joined by another candidate hoping to win the Democratic nod for AG. Eric Donalo served as the state insurance superintendent between 2007 and 2009. He's now a professor at the NYU Stern School of Business. Eric, thanks for coming in and uh, chatting with us this evening. It's good to be here. Thank you. So there's a little news actually breaking today on your campaign. You collected your endor an endorsement from the 21st County Chairman, uh, the Schenectady County Chairman, which um, is significant in our neck of the woods. Brian Quayle signed on to endorse yes. your campaign. This brings you to about 9.05 percent of the weighted county vote. Uh, that's a far cry from the 25 percent you need, but still not too shabby. Um, so what do you think of, in terms of your chances of getting onto the ballot at this point? Well, I think that they're good. I think that the 21 county chairs reflects support that reflects the work that we've done to date. I've traveled over 15,000 miles, heard a lot of people on the issues. It reflects having been the state's insurance superintendent, having been at the attorney general's office. There's a certain familiarity coupled with a certain credibility that I've delivered uh, state legal services twice before, stood up to interests in corporations stood up to the insurance companies. So I'm very honored to have Chairman Quayle, and I'm very honored to have the support. And uh, we've been doing it since August, and I'm really pleased where we are going into the convention. We'll see. I feel good. I feel confident. I believe that uh, having raised uh, the most money on the last cycle um, and having gotten this kind of support, uh, my chances are good, but I am always the underdog. I don't dispute that I'm the underdog. Been there before at the insurance department, been there before uh, at the attorney general's office where they didn't think we could do the kind of cases that we did. Uh, been there as a prosecutor. And so uh, we just keep going forward. I feel really good about the campaign. Will you petition your way on if you can't get onto the ballot at the convention? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the other interesting thing here is that you focused a lot. Those 21 county chairs, most of them, with the exception of Putnam, I think, are the bulk of them are really upstate, um, smaller counties, and not there are voters there, of course. But 50 to 60 percent of the Democratic primary vote comes out of New York City. So what is your strategy here with your focus? Obviously, it, it might behoove you when you come uh, make you favorite for the DRC straw poll. But then when it comes time for September, how is that going to work out for you? Well, I've campaigned quite a bit downstate. I've traveled a lot. I've been to many events. I don't think that there's been um, some kind of lack of campaigning downstate, but I have presented as a statewide candidate. I think it's important that when you're running for statewide office, when you want to garnish support, you go across the whole state. I think that the approach for my candidacy was many people said he's the most qualified candidate, he has the best resume for the office, but can he raise the finances? And we did that, and I think we did that extremely well. And then the next criticism was, well, can he get political support? Can he sit across from people, listen to what their concerns are, and come up with responsive solutions? And we've done that, I believe, extraordinarily well. But it's not to the exclusion of downstate at all. In fact, I am a downstate person. I've lived in the city my whole life. All the legal work I've done has been in the city. And I think it reflects a balanced statewide campaign, which is exactly what I think the candidates for attorney general should be doing. So in terms of the, the money, actually, there's, there's two criticisms that I've heard um, uh, uh, regarding your candidacy. First of all, you, you've never before held public office, but that's also true of um, at least one of the other contenders, or two, depending on if Denise O'Donnell gets into the race. Sean Coffey has also never held elected office. So you're both the two of you both outsiders, quote unquote, if you will. 
Um, but you've gotten quite a bit of money from Wall Street in terms of your campaign contributions at a time when Wall Street has been demonized. How are you neutralizing that? Do you then bring up, well, when I was at the Attorney General's office, I did X, Y, and Z. Is that your argument in response to that criticism? Well, on the first, yeah, on the first point, I think actually people who have not been in elected office have an advantage on this cycle. People want fresh approaches, fresh faces. They're tired of politics. They're tired of politics as usual and the acrimony. And you saw what happened in the last um, election cycle. So I think people who are outsiders politically, who have never run for office, but have solutions, have creative approaches to problems, and have a demonstrated history of creative solutions to the state's most difficult problems, are going to do well on this cycle. And as to um, the contributors, we have a broad set of contributors. We have large and small contributors. I worked in financial services. I worked specifically on securities fraud in the insurance department. We stepped into the financial crisis. So of course, these are people that I have encountered along the way. But I do agree with what you just said. If the criticism is somehow that I will be beholden to financial services or Wall Street, well, I think that's a ridiculous criticism. No other candidate has a record of having stood up to the insurance companies, to Wall Street, to enterprise corruption, to reforming markets, to doing billions of dollars in sending the money back to the people as a public servant, as a public official, except for me. So I actually believe that that's a criticism that just doesn't stick. It makes no sense. You did that work during the time that you were at the Attorney General's office. That was uh, under er Elliot Spitzer's time when he was there. You were with him from the beginning. Subsequently, you served for a time in his administration. Are you finding that people are saying you're too much Spitzer's guy? Well, I have not found that at all. You know, remember that the work that you're talking about, I actually did at the Manhattan DA's office. We stood up to Bear Stearns and Wall Street then. Of course, we did it and transformed the Attorney General's office off of that work. And then I did it again in the insurance department where I worked both for Elliot Spitzer and David Patterson. I'm my own person. I don't think people look at me or talk to me and think he's just like Elliot Spitzer. I am effective, I think. I have brought many creative legal solutions to problems that people thought couldn't be reached by the law. I think that's the hallmark of my public service career. Um, but if they want to draw an analogy to Elliot Spitzer as far as effectiveness in the Attorney General's office, well, I'll take that. And I think the office has been very effective under both Andrew Cuomo and Elliot Spitzer, and it's a tradition that I would like to continue. Let me just ask you one quick question. Who do you consider your main opposition to be at this moment? Oh, I don't know. I can't handicap that. I think it's an open field. It looks like a field from, you know, 1994 or 98 where you had several candidates, and I can't handicap that. It also depends where you travel. You know, Wherever I travel, you get and hear different answers about that. Okay. Okay, Eric Denal, thank you very much. We'll be seeing you in Niagara Falls. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.